Hey peeps and welcome to an IC82 review of a book. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. This is about the sixth take for this particular video because it's it's looking at my little book. Um, a loco that's been sent in. That's why we're looking at the book. Look, here's a loco. See, I'm not lying. There's a loco. There's the book. The two go together. But because this book contains incredibly sensitive, private, secret, important information, it's taken this many takes to get it right. And you'll see why. Basically, this loco was sent in to me by a lovely chap called Simon Harding, and um, he sent it in, I think, sometime last year. I think the video of it being opened went up in August, but I'm only just getting round to doing the review on it. So, yeah, well done, Will. Really on track with that one. Apologies for that, but Simon is going to get a free mug to say thank you for basically being so ace, for being so patient, and for bearing with me. So he's going to get a really nice IC2 uh, refreshment department mug, which are available on the IC2 website if you do want to go and check one out and get one. So, um, putting the logo to one side, this is my old system. This is the mail room book, <clears throat> the mailbox for the mailbox Mondays. Basically, this is due to be digitized and it's going to be a huge online database and stuff because this literally can't cope anymore. It's it's taking too long to look through stuff and find people. But if we turn it to this particular page, you can see I've had to slap down a million post-it notes because not only is Simon's information sensitive, but so is the information on the page behind, which was coming through the paper. <laughs> So, here we are. This is my mailbox book. And wherever you see one of these little pink sheets of paper, basically that means action is required. So, I've got plenty to uh, keep me busy. And um, you can see here, Letter and Hornby Collector's Loco, Simon Harding. Uh, oh, and this bit down the bottom means that he has been in touch previously and he has already had a postcard, I think. Yes, so a postcard should have already been sent out to him. So, Simon very, very kindly sent this in. I, I can't recall his letter off the top of my head, but I, I think he mentioned he hadn't even run it in. Yes, I could be getting him confused with somebody else, but uh, I'm going to have a look at this for you now, and, and then I'll get it mailed straight back to him, because obviously it doesn't need anything doing to it. And Simon, you're going to get one of these as well. <laughs> in the package will be um, an IC2 refreshment department mug. Just to say thank you for being so patient and bearing with me, basically. So you're going to get that for free as well. And of course you'll get your loco back. So, let's have a look at it. Okay, it's not the fanciest packaging in the world. We know that. It, it's the really, really basic, just do the job packaging. So let's have a look at the info sheet first. Here we go. Ah, uh, right, yeah. It's not even specific to this particular loco. Basically, locomotives with type M motor. Uh, so that includes the 060s, and it even includes some diesel and electric, which is interesting. And it even includes analog and DCC fitted. So it's going to be interesting. I wonder what graphics they're going to use. Okay, yeah, they basically just covered themselves. So that could be the back of a Jinty, and that looks like it's a Class 08. It seems like wherever they build a model with this 060 arrangement, they use the same type of motor each time. Well, not all the time, obviously. I mean, I think you wouldn't get this type of motor in the Terrier, the Terrier tanks, the really, really tiny ones. They must be something different. I don't know. I haven't done one. So please comment below and tell me if I'm right, but I'm, I'm guessing that's the case. So again, they're really usefully telling you where to put the lubrication and how little to put, because trust me, you do not need much. How to take the body off. Uh, and gosh, even if your loco is DCC fitted, they're giving you some instructions. So that's pretty cool. So, yes, this is the um, the care sheet for this particular motor. So I shall put that back to one side. So here's the model itself. We'll just take off this, this uh, window, this protective window. It does look like Simon hasn't even got into this yet. I'm very honoured. Thank you so much, Simon, for sending this in. Um, gosh, I don't, know. I don't like doing this, because it's going to tear the polystyrene, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go get a knife.
Okay, there we go. <laughs> Much better. When you have the tools for the job. Okay, wow. Gosh, <laughs> that actually does look rather smart, doesn't it? And it's still in the packaging. Let's get it out of the packaging completely. So you can see that Hornby have stopped. Well, they certainly seem to... You see, you seem to see the tissue paper less and less and less. Uh, they basically seem to use this bit of plastic sheeting now. But it works quite well. Uh, there is a hole in the back as well, so if I just push my finger in there and gently lift that out, put the plastic to one side. Oh, get rid of that little bit of... Oh, come on, get off! <laughs> get rid of the polystyrene. Oh, look at this. Simon, thank you so much for sending this in for me to review. This is really quite smart. I do like it. It's just really quirky, it's different, it's really quite cute. I can see it parked up somewhere on somebody's layout and it's looking really smart. So, what have we got then? Clearly it's an 060. Um, they call it, they say it's weathered. But to be honest, well, it just looks like they've applied a sort of a generic coating to the entire thing, which I don't think is incredibly realistic. I think um, it could certainly be improved upon. Um, okay, the coal load is fake, obviously, and I don't, I don't think it's. It looks like it looks like it's removable. But I don't think it is, so I'm not going to try because it's not mine. There is actually a little bit of cab detail, which is quite remarkable for something so small. It's not mega detailed, but you can see little bits of detail there, which is pretty good. What I do like is this number on the side, the way it's been scratched on <laughs> with somebody's finger or something. That's what I like the most. Um, I don't know if 7611 actually means something. Maybe this is based on a real model, a real locomotive that was parked up at Barry's Scrapyard, Barry's Scrapyard down in Wales. I, I don't know, <laughs> Barry's Scrapyard. At the uh, Barry Island, well, it's not Barry Island, is it? It's just down the, just down the road from there, the Barry Scrapyard, the huge one, the one where the, you know, well, not millions, but thousands of locos ended up. Maybe it has actually got a tail. I don't know. Let's see, what does this say? ALA Dunkirk? Dunkirky? Dunkirky? Um, something ET ferry boat. Derby, London, region, region, order. Gosh, there's some language on there that is not um, English. That's very interesting. I don't know if it's French or German, but. Hmm. There is more to this loco than meets the eye. I'm very, very intrigued. Now, you do get some detail. We've got little handrails on the side here, and I don't. I can't tell if they're metal, I think they're plastic, but they are proper detail though. It is a proper handrail, it's not moulded into the body. We've got rivets, there's a nice little chimney, uh, you've got some safety valves and a whistle, uh, that does not move, uh, the, the buffers are not sprung, and I don't like the giant tension lock coupler in the front and back. I would definitely modify that. Although it looks like you can, you can unscrew it, get rid of it, and then you can probably, it would have to be permanent, I think the solution would have to be permanent, but you could uh, mount a, a NEM slimline tension lock, or even a ROCO, or you know, a knuckle coupler, anything you wanted. You could put, you could put something else on there if you wanted to, I don't think it would be too hard. You can see that the cog here in the centre has been freshly lubricated. It's like it's, yep, <laughs> it's still got the uh, oil on that has been put on at the factory. Um, the wheels look quite nice. Again, though, it's this sort of generic weathering that they've just applied to the entire model, probably to save costs, probably just because it's a collector's club model. I don't know. I really don't know. I couldn't say. Um, Simon can probably reveal more information than I can. But it's not bad. It's genuinely not bad. It's quite quirky. I love the fact that it's obviously got some sort of history to it, some sort of character, and I want to go all detective and find out what that is, but I haven't got the time. So I'm hoping that... I'm just going to be lazy. I'm going to hope that all my 
uh, YouTube uh, viewers out there, I, I'm going to hope that you can just uh, answer that for me. I'm sure you can, because trust me, you're way better than I am. Honestly, you know more than I do. You really do. Let's get it on the track and see how she runs. Okay, so here we are over at the test section of the layout in the conservatory. I'm just going to plonk this. I love that word, plonk. I just think it's so poetic. I'm going to plonk this 060 WD11 onto the outer loop there. And um, I've got the Gauge Master Combi controller plugged in. So that's going to deliver a really nice, steady, reliable source of power. Uh, I don't think it's ever been ran. It doesn't seem to have been, in which case I truly am honoured. Uh, this is very special and thank you so much to Simon for sending this in. And let's give it a bit of juice then and see what happens. Here we go. Uh, not very much. Let's pick a direction. That would help. Oh, we got something and then it stopped. Let's try again. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, no, yes. Oh, there we go. I think it's a little bit stiff. If this is the first time it's ever run. Yeah, it's moving, but it's going to need running in. Definitely. That's pretty good though. I mean, to be honest, these motors, they're not the best in the world. They're not the highest quality. But that's... Yeah, see, it's, it's stopped again. <laughs> um, gone. I can get it to go pretty slow. That's pretty impressive. Right, what we'll do then is we'll make sure that the rails are 100% clean because they're probably only about 75% clean. I'll make sure the wheels are really clean and then we'll get her running in. Okay, here she comes. Right, the track has been thoroughly cleaned. It's 100% clean. I'm using my trusty track magic and the wheels are clean, everything's clean. But the performance still is a little bit hit and miss, to be honest. I don't know, if, I don't know whether it's just parts of the layout, maybe, that the loco is struggling on because of the number of pickups that it has. Or whether the motor just needs more running in, I'm not too sure. But let me just show you what I mean. If I get it to go in reverse, and then I grab the camcorder and we follow it, you'll see what I mean. Here we go. Okay, we're off. So as I pan around, nice and slowly, actually so far pretty good. Yeah, it's showing me up now. It's doing it just to make me look like a fool. Even over the express points. <laughs> okay, actually the loco seems to be going better in reverse than it does um, forwards. Oh, yep, see, it struggled a little bit then. And then. And then. And then. And on that little bit, but then we've got some damage to track there. Yeah, see, see what I mean? It seems a little bit stuttery going forwards. Very, very, very bizarre. But if we get it to go backwards. <laughs> there's um there's not an issue. That is the strangest thing. It genuinely seems to run much smoother in reverse. I mean there's a yeah, there's a few little hiccups, there's a few little places where it seems a bit unhappy. But, it, what, what a bizarre little locomotive! Um, genuinely seems to run better going backwards than it does going forwards. I really don't understand that. It could be that the motor needs a bit of a service, it could be the gearing, could be the pickups, the contacts. Um, could of course just be my layout, it's just a test layout. And to be honest, I've been thinking, I think the entire test layout needs ripping up. Um, put a new floor down, build a new test layout, and some other track needs to go upstairs to the proper layout. So, oh, so much to do. Um, it is nice though, it's genuinely nice, it's really quirky. I love 
the history and the story about it, there's obviously something about it. Well, I think. I hope so. I hope it's not just made up. Um, but thank you so much, Simon, for sending this in. And um, I hope you get it back very, very, very soon, nice and safe, along with, <laughs> along with a free mug. Thank you. terminates here. Please ensure that you take all your belongings with you when you leave the train. Thank you for traveling with us today. Hey peeps, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.